always with adaptations, uh, the question of like fidelity comes into question. Yep. Um, with characters, for example, like Caitlin Snow, um, are you guys looking forward to playing with? Because she is introduced very much as a hero yeah. or part of the hero team. Are we going to see the transformation, or is that something you'd rather just play with and keep us in? Mind? I think, uh, no, I mean, I think we always try to um, build up toward who the characters are in the books, how long it takes us to get there, and how we get there, uh, we don't always know, and, uh, but, but I think rarely, we, we've rarely kind of put something in that, that we didn't try and head in somehow in that direction, little bit by little bit, um, but it's, it's, it's so much is dependent upon success, really, of the show working, and, and having the longevity to kind of do some of those things. Um, she wouldn't be full Killer Frost until very far from now. How do you decide what sort of characters and villains to take from the coin books and bring over and what to, to leave for future? Um, you know, we, we kind of just have our own... So much of, the, uh, of, of how we decide all of it is just what we would like to see if we were watching. Uh, and so... And, and, and Jeff is obviously... Uh, the most knowledgeable person about uh, uh, comic books I've ever met, and so it's a, he, he has tons of options that he, he fires off, and then I'll pretend like I know what he's talking about, and I'll go home and like, research <laughs> and read. Uh, and, and Andrew is, is the second most knowledgeable. So, um, uh, and I'm, there's a far drop, and then there's me somewhere down there in the mud. Um, but, uh, so, so we just kind of, we kind of do it that way. I mean, and then it, it has to really work, though, in terms of what, you know, so many times we, we come up with a character first and then we kind of retroactively go oh wow there's someone in the DC universe that is perfect for that you know that happens that happens probably the most well John Wesley Ship was a big get for you guys very what can you tease kind of about what his role will be in season one since when we find him in the pilot he is in prison uh, yeah, and a, an innocent man imprisoned and a big part of the journey of season one is you know is, is Barry's desire to free his dad especially now that he knows he's for sure he's innocent you know and that wasn't just his childhood imagination inventing something um, now he's experiencing himself the same kind of wondrous things that he saw that night and I, and I think so um, you know uh, and, and just uh, you know so much of the show is Barry's separate fathers, you know. He has Joe West who raised him, he has his father who's innocent of staying in prison, we, you know, the tragedy of that. And he has, you know, his his, sci- his science dad, you know. Uh, we, we talk a lot about uh, searching for Bobby Fischer. Uh, and, and, and it was a show, it was a movie that, you know, actually had like a kid who sort of was torn between all those different kind of gurus. Uh, and so, they're, they're, you know, we'll be dealing with all, all of them in that way. The relationship between uh, Oliver and Barry, uh, do you see like any parallels with him and with Oliver and Roy, kind of the same way that it's like a big brother, little brother situation? <laughs> you know, I think I, I, there's definitely, um, Oliver has certain qualities that make him seem sort of, but I think as we get into the, you know, hopefully as we get into episode eight, which would be the crossover episode, and they're really on screen together, uh, again, they both have a lot to still learn from each other. Uh, and you even saw that last year, hopefully, in, in the emergence of Barry as a character when he saved Oliver's life. And he wasn't just a fanboy, you know, he was, uh, who wanted to learn more about the Arrow, but he was actually, like, a very valuable part of the team, gave him his mask. And so, it's interesting what, you know, they have to learn from each other, and hopefully that's, we do it in a way where it's surprising. Um, but I, it, uh, it's just going to be nice to have them both on screen together. How much more, I mean, everyone's excited about the crossover event. Yeah. How much more effort and logistics go into into that compared to a regular I think a lot you know I, I, I'd be lying if I said I knew exactly because we haven't done it all yet <laughs> and, and, and so I don't I, th- I think about it enough where it's like alright what's the best version of these episodes and then as it becomes more and more realistic it becomes more and more of a nightmare uh, <laughs> just in terms of like wait a second this person's supposed to be over here shooting this how can we we can't shut that show down for a week they have to be shooting in episode 2 then we're over here with these guys and they have to be shooting an episode <laughs> It, there's a lot of that, a lot of those kind of like it's like a battle, you know. And uh, uh, so anyway, so but it's that, a good battle, right? It's a good. It's always worth it. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. It's worth it because then you get the scenes back, and you see the two of them on a rooftop, or you see, you know, and, and it feels like the comic books, you know, or at least for me, it felt like when I would read it as a kid, and you know, flipping through the Arrow comic. The first thing I would do sometimes with books when I was a kid was flip through it just to see who else maybe showed up, you know. <laughs> 
Uh, and uh, and so that's it. Just it makes it it makes the world feel bigger and and, uh, and it's neat. Well, you haven't done the uh, festival yet, but so what is the most challenging thing you've shot so far? Is there something you can choose about? It's a great or? question. I, I think uh, definitely without a, without a doubt, it's going to be maintaining the level of visual effects everybody saw in the pilot. Um, we don't have nobody has the same amount of money to make a series episode than they do to have a pilot. So you have to be really smart about where you spend your money, and, and you have to do it every week. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you don't want to. Uh, we're not trying to trick the audience into watching the show. You know, like we want to deliver on the promise of the show. Uh, and so it's been uh, where do we spend and how do we spend the money so that we still get that some of those same kind of thing. And I think people are going to be really, really. Um, the, the show operates. We have a lot of heart and a lot of emotion, which is great and surprising, I think, for this kind of show. But the wow factor of the visual effects and some of the uh, sequences that we have coming up and some of the things we're doing, uh, from, from crashing trains to, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, gosh, I don't want to avoid too, too much, but uh, 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 to, you know... Uh, What's it like when, when Flash, you know, saves a, an entire group of people from a burning building for the first time? And, you know, and, and uh, uh, what's it like when he's not fast enough and loses people? You know? uh, and those, those, those are all great things we get to do.